Lonnie Johnson is what you would call a prolific inventor. The engineer holds more than 100 patents, inspired to create ever since he was a child. I was always curious about how things worked. I would take my siblings' toys apart to Sometimes I put them back together, sometimes I put, use parts to make something else totally different. When he was a teenager, Johnson won an engineering contest with a robot he built while growing up in the segregated South. We were the only black school represented, but Linux was such an impressive piece of work that we were able to walk away with first place. Years later, as an engineer for NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, Johnson helped design the Galileo mission to Jupiter and the Mars Observer projects. But Johnson's biggest claim to fame was engineering this toy, the Super Soaker Squirt Gun. More than a billion dollars in sales later, Johnson had the resources to work on his real life's mission, finding ways to power the world without polluting it. That was my strategy because I was having a lot of trouble getting investors or people to support the research that I wanted to do in the hard science area. The engineer started two companies, located them in what was once a blighted Atlanta neighborhood, and hired fellow scientists to work on his mission. We've done some things at the research level that a lot of people have predicted were impossible and could not work. Johnson and his team spent seven years developing this lithium air battery, a battery he says provides ten times more energy than the most powerful batteries now on the market. Whereas the auto industry now is trying to get to 100 miles on a single charge, you'd actually be able to charge your car and drive uh, up to 1,000 miles on one charge nonstop. So that would eliminate the reservation that a lot of people have about electric cars. Johnson has tested the battery's ability in the lab time and again. But in order to get the battery to work in an electric car, it needs to be larger. And scaling it up takes big money. We could actually put it in a car and drive a car, I'd say 12 to 18 months if we had adequate funding. But Johnson says companies with far more resources are starting to catch up. Now we've got large entities like the National Laboratories and the IBM and others who have very deep pockets are starting to focus on this technology. So we've got to run faster to stay ahead. The other potentially world-changing invention he's developed is this engine. The JTEC converts heat to electricity. Popular Mechanics Magazine awarded the JTEC its breakthrough prize in 2008. And the National Science Foundation has said the JTEC has, quote, a good chance of being the best thing on Earth. It took us a while to convince people that even the engine was real and it could work. Johnson says the engine, which pushes hydrogen through a membrane, could power entire cities once it's scaled up. If we had a way of converting heat from the sun to electricity as, as, as cost effectively as we can burn coal or, or gas or, or natural gas to produce electricity, then you know, we would be using the sun a lot more. This would really, literally change the world if we were successful. Johnson has received some funding from the Department of Energy and support from the Department of Defense, but not enough to get the project commercialized. That, he says, will take several million dollars. Everything depends on resources. I could have an engine working in, in inside of a year at this point. So far, Johnson has mostly gone it alone. It has been a major personal investment. The 61-year-old hopes will pay off in his lifetime. If it doesn't, it won't be for a lack of trying. <laughs>